Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a video on my recent holiday, um, or if you can call it a holiday. Um, basically, I went on the Anne Frank and Oscar Schindler tour. Um, obviously, most people know who Anne Frank is. She was the girl who uh, lived in a secret annex with seven other people um, in her dad's factory. And they hid out for two, almost two years. Um, and yeah, so we went and we did that. I did that with my dad and my stepmom, um, which was really awesome. And um, it was good, it was emotional, it was like sad at times, it was happy at times. We had two like amazing drivers who were Heidi and Mike, and um, they were just awesome, their service was like amazing. And then we had a tour guy called Dave who was also awesome, and um. <coughs> so like knowledgeable about this subject and I'm sure many other subjects too uh, but yeah and they were just like awesome and they kind of made it happy when we could be happy and stuff like that and then obviously like the times we had to be respectful we were but like it's the type of talk because obviously it's the, you know the holocaust and um but it was a really interesting tour and yeah so I'm just gonna like basically tell you guys what we did. So this might be a bit of a long video, um, but yeah. So day one, we just travelled by ferry uh, down to Belgium or up. I don't know, which you know, across. We'll say across to Belgium, um, and I found out I was seasick, so that was a new thing. And um, then we stayed overnight in. Belgium before heading to Amsterdam where we went to the Anne Frank Memorial which is a little statue of um, Anne Frank with like a little plaque saying Anne Frank and then like the year she was born and the year she died I think it says on there and um, everyone knows like Anne Frank's diary so that's how she became famous obviously and um, <coughs> we went to view the exterior of the Anne Frank house um unfortunately there's so many visitors that actually go into the house that um it's i think they were saying it's been deemed kind of unsafe for so many people to go in and then they don't like having big groups going in either so yeah um there we go that's a bit loud. um so yeah and then we also went to a place called camp westerborg which was a transit camp for Jews to go to like other concentration camps or um, and things like that, and then that so that was all day two. It was a twelve day tour. Day three, we went to Bergen Belsen uh, museum slash camp because there's a museum and then there's like a separate bit which you have to get a bus to, which is like I think it was like two euros or something like that uh, for a, a return and. Um, you have to get the bus like over to that camp and then you can just like spend some time there what we did is we went to the actual camp first so then we knew how much time we had when we came back to the museum um because basically with the coach trip it's kind of like limited how much time you have in each place unfortunately um it's good because you get to go to a lot more places than you would if you spent like days and days there or whatever um but obviously like I said you don't really get to spend that much time there so it's kind of annoying at the same time but it's good um then for lunch we went down to a place called Cell or Seal I don't really know how to pronounce it but yeah so we went there for lunch and I think we just had a sandwich um but yeah and then I've got like notes because I know I'm gonna forget straight if I don't have notes um so then day four we went to the bunker we went to hitler's location of his bunker because obviously the bunker isn't there anymore um where he actually committed suicide he took a cyanide pill and then um shot himself as well and there's like a sign and then it's just like we went to the actual location where it would have been if it was still there um <clears throat> Because obviously eventually Hitler knew that he'd lost the war. The only war he was winning at this time was against the Jews. Um, and on every other thing he was trying to fight, he was obviously buggered, basically. Um, 
we saw what was left of the Berlin Wall. They've got like a little bit of the wall and then like um, plaques and like photos and things like that. Like in, uh, boards we like writing on. They've got it in English and in German, obviously. Um, and then also the typography of terrors, which is just basically like you have the wall on this side and then on this side is the typo typography of terrors, which is a museum uh, which shows all the evilness of the Nazis and what they did and things like that. And um, it's pretty, like... I guess it's kind of controversial because some people probably would say, well, why have you got a museum like dedicated to such evil people sort of thing? And then other people obviously are going to say, well, if we don't remember it, then it's going to happen again sort of thing and we can't make the same mistakes, which I kind of, I'm in the middle of that. Um, but yeah, um, we also went to Checkpoint Charlie, which is like a little checkpoint they have like um we never actually went in but they have like a museum there or like some sort of thing like i said i never actually went in so but um yeah and then we also went to platform 17 or translated in german as gly 17 where 50,000 jews were deported to different concentration camps such as auschwitz or theresienstadt or um i think there were some that were transferred to bergen belsen and things like that and um, it was something stupid like 28 or something was the last amount of Jews uh, transported to Auschwitz, the last ever transport to leave that platform. I think it was around, it was 20 something, it was like 20, in his 20s, it was like something stupid like a waste of resources, even though they could have obviously been using that to fight like the, um, you know, the arm, like defense basically they could have used it as <clears throat> but obviously they wanted to waste it because like i said he was only winning against the jews he wasn't winning the war you know he was buggered basically um <clears throat> we also visited the wannacy conference center which is where all the german uh nazi party leaders had their like meetings and their conference stuff and all that and then on day five, we went to Sachsen, Sachsenhausen concentration camp. Um, there was a memorial to the Jews that had died. And basically, there was one uh, little like plaque thing. And I'm sure it was like one of the youngest people. There was like 19 or something ridiculous like that. It was like a young boy who was like 19. Of course, on the gate it had, like when you come into it, it had something, uh, it had work or set you free because that was their like joke or whatever. Because um, obviously that was a lie, it didn't set you free. Um, what was I going to say? But when we went out to see the Jewish thing, we basically really got stuck because there was like a turnstile thing, so we like went out and then I was like, oh, well. Not that. And, uh, and obviously we thought like oh you just go back out the same way but it wouldn't open when we went to go back out and then I, um, it wouldn't work and then there was a guy who was on our tour with us and he was on the other side he was like you guys uh, alright or whatever and we were like no we're stuck and um, <laughs> my dad was like panicking like I was just there like and then I was like oh there's a bell by there and then they pressed the bell and it was fine but um, yeah and then in the evening I'm on the right page we went into the sound centre um, and the drivers and Dave were dressed in um, lady hose and that's what it's called and uh, Heidi was dressed in a drindle and um, which is like obviously the um, traditional German clothing <coughs> um, which was pretty cool to be honest. Um, Um, we went to see a memorial to the soldiers that had fought and lost their lives trying to fight against the Germans. Um, it was basically like this big massive like arch thing and it had like, it was in German, but it had like, um, I think it was like names and like their, um, position or whatever, like on each pillar sort of thing. Um, 
and yeah um There was also um, some crosses, and um, they were like on the other side, and it was basically a memorial to the people who had been shot uh, while trying to actually cross the Berlin Wall, because obviously the Berlin Wall actually split like families and you know uh, their loved ones and things like that. So people wanted to obviously try and get across. Um, we also saw the Hindenburg Gate, um, and then we went to a beer cellar, which I'd never been to a beer cellar at this point, and I'm not joking, I had the biggest, like, it was like a jug, it was literally like this wide of coke, and it was, like I said, it was the biggest, it was the biggest, sorry guys, it was the biggest coke I have ever seen, like, it was massive, um, but yeah. So then day six was just travelling again, because um, we stayed in Berlin for three nights and we also stayed in Poland for three nights. So day six was just travelling and then off again to Poland. Um, so we went to the Jewish Memorial Square, uh, the Ghetto Hero Square is what it's called, um, <coughs> which was basically the Jewish ghetto where 17,000 people were forced to live. And sometimes um, there was like a lot of families forced to live in one flat and basically on that Jewish uh, square there's like chairs because what they used to do is I think they used to ask like what's your occupation and stuff and then obviously they'd decide like whether they were useful and if they weren't useful then obviously they'd be sent to a, a death camp or they'd just be shot and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, we also went to Schindler's factory, as I said, um, Oscar Schindler was a guy who tried saving as many Jews as he could by getting them to work for his, um, in his factory, um, so he tried to save as many of them as he could and be like, tell them they could come and work for him and then they wouldn't obviously be sent to concentration camps and death camps and anything like that. Um, we also went to Plazau concentration camp which is like still there um, and it's like a big thing I can't really explain you'd have to see the picture but it's like a memorial basically and the camp obviously has been turned into like there's a lot of plaques and things like that all around it um, but yeah, so then day eight was the day that we, in the nicest way possible, like, not looking forward to, but that's the wrong word, but wanted to go for basically was, which it was Auschwitz. Um, but it was the one thing that I was like, like I said, looking forward to, so that, that's not what I mean. I mean, like, it was the one thing that I want, I really have wanted to see, like, since since I was in about year eight or nine, I think it was, I think it was eight, and um, we started learning about Anne Frank and the Holocaust and like the Jews and everything like that, and then, um, <coughs> and then we learned about that until about year 11, year 10, year 11, um, and then People were going into sixth form, they could go to Auschwitz, and I wanted to go, but obviously I didn't want to go into sixth form, like I wasn't going into sixth form. Um, so I never got the chance to go, so this is the one thing that I've always wanted to go to. Um, I'm glad I've done it, I'd not, I'm not, I wouldn't go back though. It's so... Like, you can read as many books, you can watch as many films, you can look at as many pictures as you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for it. Like... And also I'm thinking of doing like a separate video so like let me know in the comments below if you want me to do that because I just think that I might do that uh, <coughs> at some point. But yeah, um, it's definitely something that if you do go you'll never forget it. Like like I said there's so many things that I'm not going to say in this video because like I said I want to make a separate video on it anyway. But um, there's like nothing up for you. Like I said, you can watch all the films, you can watch all the TV shows, documentaries, whatever you want to watch, whatever you want to read, look at, whatever. It won't prepare you for for it. Like I, I, the day before we were going to Auschwitz, I was speaking to one of the other 
um, guests on the tour, and I was saying, oh yeah, I don't cry, I don't cry, you know, like I'm, like I get sad, but I don't really cry. Um, <laughs> and then we got out of um, Auschwitz the end because the tour takes about like an hour and fifteen minutes to an hour and a half, I think. Um, and there's also two parts, but the one part we did with the guided tour, the one main camp we did with the guided tour, uh, and then the second uh, part of the camp we actually did with our main tour guide, Dave. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, nothing can pay for that. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, as soon as we got out at the end, like, me, my dad, and my well, my dad started, basically my dad burst into tears, and then, like, I saw him, and then I started crying, and, like, we were all just hugging, and then Dave, he was so nice to love him, like, he came over and just gave us all a big hug, and it was just, like, it was something that you need, like, after, like I said, I, I was probably like, oh, yeah, I'm prepared, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, like, and I was, no. <laughs> like I said, I know I keep saying it, but you won't ever be prepared for... Like, there's so many emotions, like, you feel angry, like, you want to question it, obviously you don't know why, because, you know, um, well, we know why, it's because Hitler thought that, like, the Jews, it was the Jews thought they lost the war and stuff like that, but, um, you know, there's so many emotions when you go through the gates, like, even when you see the game, you haven't been through it yet, it's, like, it's, it's mad. So day nine was just mainly travelling, like I said, I'm going to make another video out of Auschwitz anyway, um, <clears throat> but yeah so day 10 we went down to Prague to a concentration camp or a, a labor camp called uh, Terezin which was as Dave was telling us literally if you ask a little child probably like say a six year old to draw a prison they would have drawn that like it actually looks like it doesn't look like any other concentration camp like because most of them are obviously just like empty fields or like now where they are because the huts have been knocked down and stuff and some do, still do have the huts up but um this doesn't look anything like that there was like a little underground tunnel but i'm a wuss so i didn't go through that um but yeah <clears throat> and also we had my favorite hotel in this one basically because um the hotel was like a little annex because Basically, there was the main hotel which had like the dining hall or the restaurant thing, and where we go for breakfast. And then, if you go down the road and take a left, there was the hotel which had all the rooms in. But obviously, we had a triple room. Everybody else only had uh, double or single rooms. So we got to, we stayed in the main hotel, and everyone else had to stay in the the extra little bit down there. But literally, our room was like so nice. It had um, one. Uh, double bed or like two single beds but like together so they had two separate uh, duvets and then you had uh, a bed which was all made up next to it and then we had a bed here and then around like there was a bed at the bottom and then to get to the bathroom you have to go like you come into the room basically you have to take a right go all the way down and then <laughs> turn again and the bathroom was like really nice as well and it was literally like to me I think it looks like They've converted like a loft or something into that room. Uh, but yeah, I, that was my favourite hotel to be honest. And it had Wi Fi, so. And the plug was right next to the bed, so when I could charge my phone while I was on my phone, if that makes sense. So yeah. Um, day 11, we went to Nuremberg, Nuremberg which was uh, first of all where Hitler had made his spe speech to hundreds of people. Um, it's basically like a whole, like, just, um, oh, how do I explain it? It's like a big massive path, basically. And then here you'd have, like, the podium and then loads of steps and stuff, which has actually been, um, it's not, what does he say? It's not real bricks or something like that. Um, basically it's like, it's quite unstable, so they're having to work on it and make it stable because obviously like people want to go and see it um something like that he was saying anyway um <clears throat> and then we also went to the nuremberg courthouse which was home uh of the trials for all the uh guards and the things like that from all the different concentration camps 
and so you go into the actual courtroom that is called room 600 and um, that's where we went first before it actually got busy and um, <coughs> and so we went in there and you had like this thing and you pressed a number so obviously for room 600 it would be 600 and then like because everything's in German so then they'd speak English um, through the thing it was like an automated thing um, so yeah, we went and seen that, which was really, really quite cool. Um, quite good at, I mean, I don't know how you describe it, like, not cool, because that's, again, the wrong word, but, um, <coughs> just let me get comfy a second, but, um, yeah, and then you go down to the, no, you go up, sorry, to the next floor, because basically there's three floors, there's the ground, then there's the room 600, which has room 600 and it has toilets as well on that floor i think as well and then on the next floor up it had like the actual museum part so you go through so it starts with like 101 102 103 and you type all those numbers like one at a time obviously onto your um what you call it onto your kind of think uh onto your i don't know what it's called it's like a translator i guess you call it but yeah um and then, well, we didn't really have time to finish that, because like I said, with a coach trip, obviously everything's kind of like, you have to be certain places at certain times. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the tour, um, as much as you can enjoy something like that. Um, and I'm glad to be back doing videos. Um, I didn't vlog, because like, you know, don't really have the confidence to vlog in public because I'm a wuss as I said um let me just find that link to Dave's book like I said I haven't actually read it yet because when he was he was selling them while we were on tour but um he only had like a couple so I didn't get the chance to pick one up um you can get it on Amazon I will put the link below I'm just gonna see if I can find where or what sorry it's called because um, I know I saved the bookmark. One second. <coughs> Is it on here? Is it going to be on here? I will find it, don't worry. I know it's. Um, he's a battlefield tour guide, I believe that's correct. Um, yeah. And he, like I said, he's so, so, uh, smart. And, um, he's, um, he's just, like, such a nice person, too. Like, he's so lovely and, like, he's a genuine person, obviously. Um, and, yeah, he's just, he's really cool, in, in my opinion. Um, yeah, let me just, I will find this link, give me one second. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend that you go with um, Ledger if you are going to do a, uh, a coach trip, because um, i never done one before, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but I had never done a tour, a coach tour, um, with any coaches um, before this one and I like I said as much as you can enjoy this kind of thing um, I did enjoy it and like like I said he was the type of it and the drivers for Mike and Heidi as well I put their links below like the ledger links um, they made it like super enjoyable okay so this is his book it's called Japan at War 1931 to 1945 um, as the cherry blossom falls and it's by his name's David McCormack and um, that's it there like I said I'll put the link in the description anyway oh this isn't sponsored by the way um I wish <laughs> um and then he also has another one which isn't actually out yet but I know it's coming out I'm not 100% sure when oh there we go 6th of July and it's called the Berlin 1945 battlefield Part 1, the Battle of the Old Denise. I don't know if that's pronounced right, I'm sorry if it's not. Um, 
so this is what the cover looks like i will find the link down below i know they do a blog on ledger as well so um i'll post some of his stuff below i'll basically just post like, the ledger link and then you can go and have a look for yourself they do do they do do they do um what they call flights as well now um because what the tour that we've actually done they actually do an outfit by ear I, it's not called that but basically they do the same sort of thing i think it's less days though um but by ear instead of coach which i don't know if i'd like to do and to be honest i haven't been on a plane since i was like six or seven so i don't remember if i liked it or not i i don't know um even though I want to fly, because obviously I want to go to New York, as you guys know. But yeah, I'm getting off subject a little bit here. Um, so, yeah. Also, guys, who likes this cap? Yes, cap to be specific. Um, <laughs> it's pink and white and checkerboarded. It's Vans, of course, because, yeah. Um, and I also put this tie-dye t-shirt so I don't even know if you can tell it's tie-dye in this light. And also, I have these pink jeans, right? But they're so pale, they look like... Um, they're not jeans when they're from far away, so it's a bit um, risky. Because I uploaded a picture, and um, someone was like, "Oh, where's your jeans or whatever?" And I was like, and then I realised, right, I'm gonna go now because I've been mumbling for like ten minutes. Um, right, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.